Eco Explorers. My name is April. I work at the North Carolina Arboretum. Hi everyone. My name is Libby. I am the program coordinator for Eco Explore at the North Carolina Arboretum. My name is Kristen. Um, I'm here to talk to you about two things today. Hey everybody, Jonathan Marshall here. Just kidding, April Fools! It's me, Anna. Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Perkins. I am an environmental educator at the North Carolina Arboretum. So, what is an invertebrate? Just a review. Do y'all know? Invertebrates are animals that do not have a backbone or bony skeletons. So if you take your hand and you put it in the middle of your back, you can feel those bones running down your back. That's your backbone or your spine. So these are things like insects, um, spiders, crayfish, things like that. Step number two is to get outside, um, look for invertebrates, see if you can take pictures of five invertebrates and upload them to your Eco Explore account. Step three is then to pick a favorite invertebrate you found, do a little digging on the internet, see what comes up, what is interesting to you, so maybe what it eats, where it lives, does it have a cool life cycle, any other interesting facts you can find. Take a picture of your work and submit it to Eco Explore. Step number four is keep an eye out for our newsletter. Um, my friend Anna put together a really lovely video and she's gonna be sharing that with you later this week. And the good thing about studying these different critters, why we really like to study them, is that they're everywhere, right? You can find them all over your neighborhood. You might even be able to find them in your house. I've been exploring my yard in Swanano, North Carolina, and I found this lovely hemlock tree. This fuzzy stuff right here is actually an invertebrate. This is an invertebrate called hemlock woolly adelgid. It was introduced here by accident, so it's kind of like the English ivy that Anna told you all about last week. Um, it's an invasive species. It hangs out on the hemlock trees and sucks all their nutrients out. Um, this can actually kill the tree if you do it long run. One of the things that scientists have been working on is they um, have been looking at introducing the predators that would normally eat the hemlock woolly adelgid. They've been looking at releasing them here so that they can eat up the adelgid that's hanging out on the hemlocks. Another thing scientists have been looking at is there is a group of hemlocks up in New Jersey. The other hemlocks around them are dying, but this one group is hanging on. So scientists have been taking seeds from those hemlocks and planting them in other states. So hopefully um, they can grow up to be nice, big, strong hemlocks that won't have this problem with the adelgid. And today we're going to discuss an invertebrate that we're, we are all familiar with, and that is the earthworm. I collected some this morning, and here's a little guy. I am joined here today with my roommate and friend Marie, who's a soil scientist. I'm gonna turn it over to her and let her explain a little bit about why earthworms are so important for the soil. Hi friends! Earthworms are fascinating because they can add nutrients to the soil in three main ways. And adding these nutrients makes the soil better. So the first thing that they do is as they eat this soil, they end up creating these awesome burrows and channels through the soil where roots can grow and water can infiltrate. They poop out these things called soil casts. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> and the soil casts are really high in nutrients. Secondly, when um, the worms themselves die, they release a lot of nutrients that can be used by plants. And third, they bring down plant litter into these burrows, and that plant litter can then be consumed deeper in the soil by microorganisms. So just to kind of sum up what Marie said, the worms are so helpful for the soil because they kind of turn all of those nutrients around. They are also really important parts of diets for birds and um, reptiles, amphibians, things like that. I challenge you to go out into your backyard, make sure you have permission from your parents and go find some earthworms yourself. I'm gonna tell you about an invertebrate that lives with me in my home. I see so many of these every single day. Um, it is the infamous stink bug. Ooh. And I also have 
some live specimens that I've caught in my little bug box. Just like Kristen said on Monday about the Will Willia delgid being an invasive species, these are also an invasive species. These were introduced a while back and they've come in and taken over and they do really well here. They thrive actually. Um, they more commonly live in orchards and farms and gardens, but they also find their way into your homes. So they eat plants and they don't have a regular mouth like you and me. They don't have teeth, they don't bite, but instead they have a mouthpiece that is more like a straw. And then they're able to suck out that sap uh, and juice and that's how they get their nutrients and their food. How they stink is they have uh, holes and pores in their abdomen that release a stench when they're scared or threatened, and that is to deter predators from eating. Yeah. They'll also uh, release that stink when they're looking for other uh, stink bugs, so during mating season, so they apparently like each other's stink. Today, we are in Weaverville, North Carolina, um, in my backyard, and we are going to go to some of my um, kind of dormant sleeping gardens. So you can do this in your own uh, neighborhood, around your home. You can flip over rocks, but also um, different logs and um, sticks, anything that's kind of heavy like this. I like to lift it away from me, <laughs> so that way if there is maybe a bigger critter than just an invertebrate hiding under here, maybe like a, a little snake or something, they are gonna run this way, right? They're gonna run away from me and not towards me. So let's lift this first rock up. This is always fun. This is like a discovery surprise of what we'll find. All right. I see here a um, slug of some sort. So this is an invertebrate. It does not have a spine. This is in a family called a gastropod. I don't know if you all can see that. Um, their antenna, I think, are really cool looking too. All right, bye slug. I'm gonna carefully and gently kind of put this rock back. Let's see what we have under here. They're, these guys are called a lot of different things. Potato bugs, um, roly polies, um, but they're Scientists call them pill bugs. These guys are actually crustaceans. So they are invertebrates, they don't have a spine, um, but they are related to crabs and uh, lobsters and different crustaceans. And I found one more critter here. This is a centipede. I've also seen a lot of ants. So I seem to have disturbed kind of a little ant colony. Well, buy ants and buy little potato bugs. Thank you all for coming. So today we're going to be looking for a group of invertebrates called insects. Now insects have the following characteristics, all right? They have exoskeletons. So I drew a picture of a knight. So a knight has armor, right? They have has metal armor. But here you see the knight and here's a roach. The roach has an exoskeleton, kind of like the armor of a knight. All insects have antenna. So here is a picture of a moth. You can see the eyes and the tongue, and these long two strands here are its antenna. Pretty much uses those to sense things. They have three body parts. So here's a picture of an ant. So they have the head, which is here, the thorax, and the abdomen. So it's three different body parts. Insects have six legs. So here I drew a picture of a hornet. And if you could count, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six legs. Some insects are attracted to flowers and get their source of food from the flowers. And their source of food is called nectar. So these insects are called pollinators. Pollinators help plants make their own fruit and seeds. Pollinators do so by moving pollen from a flower of a plant to another flower of a different plant. This transfer of pollen fertilizes the plant. And without pollinators, plants would not be able to reproduce. So what I'm gonna do now, we're gonna try to look for some pollinators on a our good area. Well, good places to look for pollinators, just look in the flower. And you wanna be very gentle and delicate because there might be an insect in there. You don't really wanna disturb him. Okay, here's a honeybee right here, if you all can see him. So this guy's actually finding or eating nectar as we speak. Pretty cool stuff. So here's a guy right here. Be just chilling. Yeah, here's some bumblebees. Moving around really fast, so it might be hard to 
to see but some up here as well. So as you can see, I flipped over two rocks here and I was able to find one, two, three, four different um, invertebrates that I could have included for my invertebrate challenge. If you want to take a picture for Eco Explore, you can either take it in the soil, make sure we can see the worm, or you can put it in your hand. Oh, he's stinking up right now, but I must have made him feel a little threatened. I'll just let him calm down for a second. So I have my, my up close photo, can tell that is a stink bug, so I can upload that to my Eco Explore account. And the scientists can learn what types of invertebrates and plants and other things are living in your yard. I had a lot of fun exploring with you outside. Come back again tomorrow for another cool live video. I want you all to be safe, have fun when you go outside, and happy exploring. Bye guys, keep exploring. Bye guys.